Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Since the advent of stealth technology, military aviation has changed forever. Nothing personifies the idea of stealth better than the F-35 Lightning II. Development of the F-35 Lightning II, a fifth-generation multi-role stealth fighter, began in the 1990s. Conceived as part of the Joint Strike Fighter, or JSF, program, it flew for the first time in 2006 and achieved Initial Operational Capability, or IOC, with the USMC in July 2015. On LHA-class amphibious assault ships, the F-35B uses Short Takeoff and Vertical Landing, or STOVL. The F-35B hovers with its directed thrust system for vertical takeoff. It can accelerate forward on the short deck with its lift fan and rear swivel nozzle angled down and backward for the additional thrust, achieving airborne status with heavier payloads. For landings, the F-35B approaches the deck at a leisurely speed turns the thrust downward and slowly descends vertically. These maneuvers are made possible by the F-35B's sophisticated propulsion system, which includes a Rolls-Royce lift system and a Pratt & Whitney F-135 engine. Landing on Royal Navy Queen Elizabeth-class aircraft carriers uses the same principle as on an LHA in the U.S. Navy. One difference is that the Royal Navy often employs Rolling Vertical Landings, or RVL, moving forward during landing. To improve its STOVL capabilities, the F-35B variant uses the Ski Jump Ramp for takeoffs. The jet angles toward the ramp at the ship's bow in preparation for takeoff. As the F-35B accelerates along the flight deck, its vectored thrust system is engaged. Due to the curve of the ramp, the aircraft's nose angles upward as it speeds onto the ski jump. This upward trajectory, paired with vectored thrust, offers greater lift and enables the F-35B to take off with a heavier payload and a shorter deck run, than would be achievable with a level deck layout, significantly increasing operational flexibility and combat loadout possibilities. On LHA-class, or Landing Helicopter Assault-class amphibious assault ships, up to 20 F-35Bs are stored on the main hangar deck. When an F-35B Lightning II lands on the flight deck of a Tripoli e or America-class amphibious assault ship, it enters ground operations mode. The pilot deactivates the lift fan and activates the wheel braking system. Ground crew, known as plane handlers, install a tow bar to the F-35B's nose gear under the supervision of a yellow-shirted aircraft handling officer. The aircraft is then carefully towed to an elevator platform by a tractor, commonly an aircraft towing tractor. The platform lowers the aircraft to the hangar deck once it's secured. Below the deck, the handlers use precise, coordinated actions to place the jet into a parking spot where it is choked, tethered, and undergoes any necessary checks and maintenance. On the vast and unpredictable seas, the F-35C has become one of the latest additions to the U.S. Navy's aircraft carrier-capable aircraft. The F-35C is a variant of the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter designed for carrier-based operations. This 21st century fighter jet is a true engineering marvel, boasting advanced stealth and sensor capabilities, thereby enhancing the military's abilities on the seas. The F-35C model has a different body frame compared to the other models of the F-35 aircraft. It has a larger wing area, 
reinforced landing gear, and a stronger internal structure to withstand the higher stresses of carrier operations. It is the largest and heaviest of the three F-35 variants, and one of its most striking features is its impressive wingspan of 44.5 feet when fully extended. This massive wingspan allows the aircraft to generate significant lift, making it capable of carrying a substantial payload and achieving impressive combat range. Additionally, the F-35C features folding wings, allowing it to fit into tight spaces like the hangar of an aircraft carrier. But what truly sets the F-35C apart is its advanced avionics and stealth capabilities. Equipped with state-of-the-art sensors and communication systems, the F-35C can track and engage multiple targets simultaneously, making it a formidable weapon in any combat scenario. Its low-radar cross-section signature allows it to penetrate enemy airspace undetected. In contrast, its advanced electronic warfare systems can jam enemy radar and communications. This makes the F-35C a valuable asset for naval aviation, providing the Navy with a decisive edge in the conflict. The pre-flight activities of the F-35C begin long before the pilot even steps into the cockpit. There are meticulous checks that go into ensuring this advanced fighter jet is ready for takeoff. The ground crew is responsible for performing a series of checks on the aircraft's engines, avionics, and weapon systems, ensuring everything is in perfect working order. They also load the aircraft with fuel and any necessary weapons or equipment. Once the ground crew has completed their checks, the pilot conducts a series of pre-flight checks inside the cockpit. This includes checking the flight controls, instruments, and communication systems, as well as testing the ejection seat. Once all pre-flight checks are complete, the pilot taxis the F-35C to the runway, which undergoes one final inspection before takeoff. This includes a review of weather conditions and any air traffic in the area, as well as a final check of the aircraft's systems. With all pre-flight checks complete, the F-35C is ready to take to the skies. Flying the F-35C is not for the faint of heart. It is a complex, high-performance aircraft requiring a skilled and experienced pilot to operate it effectively. One of the most significant risks is mechanical failure, which can occur anytime without warning. This is especially dangerous during takeoff or landing when the aircraft is most vulnerable. Furthermore, the aircraft's advanced technology can also be a double-edged sword. While it enhances the pilot's situational awareness and mission capability, it can also distract from the task at hand, increasing the risk of human error. The F-35C's unique design makes it ideally suited for carrier-based operations, including arrested landings and catapult takeoffs. These advanced techniques allow the F-35C to take off and land on the relatively small and moving platforms of aircraft carriers, providing the Navy with a powerful tool for air superiority and strike missions. The catapult launch process of the F-35C is a breathtaking display of precision engineering and cutting-edge technology. Once the pilot is in position and ready to launch, the launch crew carefully positions the aircraft on the catapult. To launch the aircraft, it must first be secured to the catapult with a launch bar to the shuttle, which is a mechanism that travels along the catapult track. This bar is locked into place using a hydraulic mechanism that generates up to 90,000 pounds of force to ensure a secure fit. The pilot must carefully align the launch bar with the catapult shuttle, ensuring that it is centered and secured in place. 
Once the F-35C has been securely locked into the catapult, the next step is to ensure the safety of the surrounding aircraft and personnel during the launch process. This is achieved through the use of a unique safety feature known as the Jet Blast Deflector, or JBD. The JBD is a massive steel door located behind the aircraft, designed to protect other aircraft and personnel from the powerful jet blast generated during takeoff. Once the launch bar is positioned and the JBD raised, the catapult is activated, accelerating the aircraft from zero to over 150 miles per hour in just over two seconds. This incredible speed is necessary to generate enough lift for the aircraft to take flight from the carrier deck. During the launch process, the pilot experiences an incredible amount of force, which can be both physically and mentally challenging. While the catapult system is used for launching an aircraft, the arresting gear on an aircraft carrier brings the aircraft to a safe and controlled stop during landing operations. The arresting gear system uses a series of cables and hydraulic dampers to absorb the aircraft's momentum during landing. To keep this system in top working order, the maintenance crew must inspect and test the system regularly, checking for any signs of wear or damage, and replacing worn or faulty components as needed. They must also ensure that the cables are properly lubricated and tensioned, and that the hydraulic dampers function correctly. Any issues with the arresting gear system could have disastrous consequences, putting the aircraft, the pilot, and the crew in grave danger. During times of war, one of the first strategic targets for the enemy is airport runways. Therefore, alternative runways may be needed, and even freeways may make a good alternative. Combat controllers in the United States Air Force play an important part in operations such as an A-10 Thunderbolt II landing on a freeway, as seen in Michigan during a highway landing exercise. These airmen are critical in identifying and managing temporary landing zones in harsh or unusual situations, such as roads, determining their appropriateness for landing. Establishing and managing communications and commanding the aircraft's landing and takeoff. Simultaneously, support airmen ensure that maintenance, fueling, and rearming, as well as all necessary supplies, are handled quickly using expeditionary resources and procedures. These actions are part of the United States Air Force's Agile Combat Employment, or ACE, plan a forward-thinking approach designed to provide the force with operational flexibility and resilience, enabling fast response in unanticipated or hostile settings. This self-sufficiency enables the USAF to maintain air supremacy in any given circumstance. When the A-10 Thunderbolt II is tasked with landing on a freeway, combat controllers first examine the area for length impediments, gradient, and surface type. With permission, they install temporary airfield tools, such as TACAN for navigation, marking the touchdown zone and ensuring aircraft communications. Airmen immediately begin rearming and refueling operations after landing. Maintenance airmen quickly inspect the aircraft for any urgent problems that could jeopardize the plane's ability to take off again. Munitions airmen employ specialized trucks to reconfigure the aircraft's weapons quickly. Airmen refill the aircraft using R-11 refuelers or other rapid refueling equipment simultaneously. Following the completion of rearming and refueling, tests are performed to ensure the aircraft's readiness. Combat controllers oversee the plane's takeoff after checking that the runway is clear executing the turnaround procedure in a relatively short window of time. With continued advancements in military tactics and technology, aircraft like the F-35 will undoubtedly play an essential role in future warfare. 
maintaining air superiority and providing versatile, rapid response capabilities across the globe. Whether on an aircraft carrier or an unexpected runway, the F-35's multifaceted abilities ensure that it remains at the forefront of defense innovation. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.